Alaska, a time of immense darkness. God has a different idea. God is invading Alaska. Master's Commission must in Alaska has one purpose, to know God and to make him known. God has a destiny for the state of Alaska. We make Master's Commission is one of the keys in God's plan for Alaska, the United States, and the entire world. Walk away, chain. Yeah. Master's Commission, Wasilla, Alaska. To know God and to make Him known. Now, I'm not Sarah Palin's judge. I'm not the jury that's going to convict her or acquit her. I can't tell you that she's saved or not saved. But I think anybody associated with this idea, ideology and this concept, it appears to me, it appears to me that she has been set up to be what she is right now. Will she run for president? More than likely. I might be wrong. But I will tell you that things like this alert me. They get me worried about what's going on in this world and how things are turning out. And I think that there is definitely a plan afoot to use the fundamental right-wing Christian movement in this country to bring all these things about, to establish this new world uh, and this new world order. Um, here's the scary part. Um, I'm going to read a verse here, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. We've talked about this in our Bible study. But I'm going to read a verse here, um, and, I, and I, I believe this verse. For the time, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And I believe that. I absolutely believe that. And I believe that God is going to judge His church. I think the process is starting now. I think the process of God judging the harlot churches and calling his people out uh, of these denominations and so on, I think that process has started. But I will tell you that judgment belongs to God. This Joel's army concept has taken this whole thing and twisted it completely around. One of their proponents, a man by the name of, by the name of Jack Deere, talks about the bloody slaughter on the church by Joel's army. I'm telling you that these people have it in their mind that they are going to be the executioners of people like you and I to get us out because we're not full of the Holy Ghost and we don't prophesy and we don't speak in tongues and we don't manifest laughter and call it the Spirit. We're not drunk enough for them. Here's what Jack Deere also says. How is God going to bring judgment upon his church and then judgment upon the land after his church? He's going to do it with a large and mighty army. Begin the slaughter and begin it in the temple and begin it with the elders and the leaders of my people. And they walk through the land and they start and they begin to slaughter. And you know God has already started that. He has already started with the biggest names in his household. He has already started the slaughter. And in his coming now among the church, he'll start with the leaders, but he'll move out into the church. That's why when he says in verse 2, it is not a day of rejoicing and happiness. It's a day of darkness and gloom. It's a day of clouds and blackness, like dawn spreading across the mountains. You really want the day of the Lord to come? Woe to you, woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. That day will be darkness and not light. And I'm telling you, this is a setup. I have suspected for a long time that the persecution that I believe is coming down the road to those who still believe the old time way and the old Bible and the old way of salvation and they're not falling for all this new drunken spirit nonsense that's going on, the persecution against us is not going to come from the government, won't have to. It's going to come from people like this. It's already happening. How many of you, how many of you have been in your church for years and we either forced out or you were asked to leave your church because you weren't going along with what was going on. They talk about the new breed. This new breed is an elite group of believers endowed with supernatural power that would enable them to be part of this army of dread warriors 
that God uh, has said to be raising up in our generation. According to John Wimber, this is a type of Joel's army who will overcome all opposition uh, to the gospel and eventually subdue the nations. This teaching is part of what is known as Dominion Theology, which teaches that an elite army of overcomers will either destroy or subdue all the enemies of Christ until they eventually gain power and authority throughout the world. The government of the nations will be upon their shoulders. Man, that is blasphemy. And when all the secular, that is from Isaiah 9, and that's to Christ. When the government of the nations will be upon their shoulders, and when all secular authorities, governments, princes, and kings have finally submitted to them, Christ will return, and they will present the kingdom to him. Now, I'm going to deal with scripture now. I've been waiting for this part. I'm going to show you the absolute heresy, and I'm going to show you the setup that goes along with this whole concept of Joel's army. I appreciate what several of you have sent to me. So, Pastor Mike, we used to be part of this. We started seeing things in the Bible. We started seeing things in your videos. And we're out. I want to encourage you that if you are part of this or have been part of it, come out. Come out. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove to you what Joel's army really is. And I want to, I want to show you this. God, God does. He has an army. And everybody says, well, we're God's army. God's got two armies. God's always in control of everything. He's in control of Lucifer, is he not? Can he not hold him back? Can he not let him go? Then God is in charge. God was in charge of Pharaoh's army, and I'm going to show you that. God was in charge of Pharaoh's army, and don't doubt it for a second. But I'm going to show you Joel's army from the Bible. Let's go to the book of Joel, chapter 1, verse 3. Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. I want you to remember that word locust. So we have palmer worm and locust. And that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. So we have three of them now. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. That's four. When we see these things, and go read the rest of this chapter, you're going to see some things. You're going to see that this is not a good thing. You're going to see these four. When we talk about the number four, we are always talking about Ephesians 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I can tell you that those four aspects of, of the devil's kingdom are trying to consume everything. They've consumed the denominations, have they not? They've consumed the Bible from off the face of the earth nearly, the, the, the record of the King James still stands, but they have consumed the Bible, they've consumed the Spirit, they've consumed the new wine is cut off. Go read Joel chapter 1. From the lips of these prophets and preachers and pastors all over the world, the new wine is cut off as a result of principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. This, in effect, is a description of what Daniel saw in Daniel chapter 2. He said, the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. I want you to remember that. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. This is the army now. This is God has an army. Go read in the book of Jeremiah as he describes this army for you, and he refers to them as coming from the north country. That's not Russia. The north country is indicative of the spiritual